the way in which a young kid internalizes shame about homosexuality will always, I, I mean, I'm a gloomy about this, but I think at some point, no one wants to be different when they're 12, you know, and, and some of that will, sure. some of that will create sure. this. And you can see them, I mean, certainly today, there's you no know, absence of Smithers is sort of all over Washington. Right. Smithers is, uh, <laughs> you to explain this Monty Burns is famous gay <laughs> aide. Uh, there were, that's, that's, but it's actually, it's a cultural archetype mm -hmm. and you see it in film, in television, in literature, the kind of sinister homosexual advisor, you know, lurking in the background. It's something that is a kind of a recurring theme. And I don't write about this in the book. I had an essay in New York Magazine this week where I sort of trace the kind of origins of this to this scandal that occurred in 19, in the early 1900s in Wilhelmine, Germany. So pre-World War I Germany, where the emperor, Kaiser Wilhelm II, was accused by a journalist of being surrounded by a homosexual clique of advisors. And this is sort of the birth of kind of 20th century conspiratorial homophobia. And so this notion that it's very similar to anti-Semitism in this way, actually, and that homophobia, there's like, you know, there's the religious Judeo-Christian influenced hatred of gay people, which is kind of the predominant one. There's the sort of hatred of gay men in particular based on a disgust for their sexual activity. And then there's this kind of conspiratorial view that, you know, if there's like two gay men in a room, right, then there must be something going on, right? If there, if there's two gay men in it's if in it's very similar to anti-Semitism, right? Like if there's two Jews involved in this organization, or I can draw a line between, you know, this Jew and that Jew, and it's, it's very similar to that. Because I think Jews like gays are a kind of they're a diasporic people. They're spread out throughout the world. They're accused of being not loyal to their to their nation, but to some the term that I come across in the book, the the homin turn, the homosexual international. Because actually, this was this was a, a play on the common turn, the communist international. This was actually a fear in the 1950s, you know, all the way up to this scandal that I uncovered, probably the biggest scoop in the book, you know, in 1980, when Ronald Reagan was being accused of being controlled by, by a cabal of right-wing homosexual advice. It sounds crazy today, but this was actually brought to the attention of the Washington Post. And so the echoes of this scandal in the early 20th century were just the same kind of indigenous in different guises you see it throughout the decades but if you take out the word sinister there is a kernel of truth yes in this too yes. that of course in a city where it was for a lot of time illegal to be working for the government and be gay yes of course people connected with one another quietly yes. yes of course there was a network of people who understood each other and yes there was a network in which people were promoted and and helped lots of as you put it one period like these these younger beautiful men were suddenly getting posts here there and everywhere i mean we shouldn't i mean it's you detail it in the book yes. it's like it was it was it was that was it, those sinister conspiracies are obviously untrue but the idea that gays didn't know who each other were sure. they didn't have a separate language they didn't uh, meet in place. I mean, and that's what scared people. And they couldn't right. tell who was a homo and who wasn't. Right.